Hey guys, so in this video we're going to look at the backed up sewer and we're going to show you how to fix this yourself and that way we're also going to save a lot of money because we don't have to pay the big bucks to the plumber. But of course this job is not going to be easy because for one we have to move heavy equipment and it also can get a little gross because only you know what goes down that sewer. Okay, so first thing we need is one of these drain cleaners and these you can rent at your local hardware store. For the 4 hour rental I paid just under $70. The weight of this machine is well over 250 pounds and chances are that you need to bring this down into your basement. So make sure you have the proper manpower to do so and also don't stand below it when bringing it down because in case it does start to run away you don't want to be run over by this heavy machine. Once in the basement I'm going to position the drain cleaner just a couple of feet away from the clean out. The cap on your clean out may look a lot different. This one is made of plastic. Yours may be out of metal or sometimes the cleanouts are not even located in the floor. Sometimes they are just a big pipe that goes right into the wall. Now before actually opening up the cleanout, you really want to make sure that there's no pressure, no water pressure coming from underneath, pushing against it. Otherwise you may be surprised by a big fountain of raw sewage, which you really want to avoid. In this case, for example, we were waiting for more than four hours for the water level to go down after we noticed that the sewer was backed up until we actually attempted to open up the cleanout. Okay, so now let us take a look at setting up the machine. Of course, we're going to plug it into an outlet. We're going to check here on the fuse that this isn't tripped. And then there's pretty much just this three-way switch on the back side of the machine. You see here, you can set this to forward, off, or reverse. Now you did notice that setting the switch doesn't actually start the motor in the specific direction. In order to do that, we have here this little foot pedal and only if you press on that, the motor is actually going to start in the specific direction. So this was just forward and then let us also go backward. And that's when we can see the cage spinning in the specific direction. And now let's go to the front of the machine where we find one of the cutting tools already pre-installed. And then also here this wing nut that we're going to loosen at this point and that allows us to pull the cable out of the cage. Now the cutting tool that's currently installed, that is the starting drill. And that's usually the one that you really want to start out with. So this is the first one you're going to put into your sewer. But then there's also a couple of other tools that you may use later on. For one, we have the grease cutter. As the name says, you're going to use this to cut through grease. Next we have the root cutter in case you're having problems because of trees. Uh, then here's a little wrench. And then the last tool is here the retrieval tool. So in case you have loose objects in the uh, drain in your sewer, then you can pull that out with the help of this. Now one last word before we actually get started. Wear some heavy duty leather gloves and also wear some old clothes because you may get some sewage on them. Now we manually pull the cable out of the cage and we're going to feed it into our clean out. And we're going to push it in there as far as it goes without actually starting the motor. And only when we start to feel some resistance is it time to start the motor by pushing on the uh, paddle. Of course, make sure that the switcher at this point is set to the forward position. Even that the drum is spinning, that doesn't mean that the cable actually is coming out by itself. You still have to slowly and carefully feed it into the drain out. When you ever get to a point where the cable kind of starts to fight back or just doesn't want to go in as before, then it is very likely that the cutting tool is stuck and that means we definitely want to stop the machine right then and there because otherwise we're going to risk major damage to the cable. So at this point it is time to stop the machine, set it into the reverse gear and then slowly and carefully retract the cable just a couple of feet until it is free again. And then eventually we can set it back into the forward gear. And since we now know that there may be an obstruction right ahead, we can feed the uh, cable a little bit slower forward in order to give it some uh, chance to cut through this obstruction. But just in case it does get stuck again, you would want to be ready to put it back into reverse gear and to retract it again. But eventually we are finally going to hear the following noise. So that means that we opened up the blockage and now the water can run out. 
And when we take a close look into the cleanout, we see that there's no more standing water at this point. In theory, we can at this point also retract the cable again and start to install a different cutter. But since we don't know if there's more problems further down the sewer line, I usually make it a habit to extend the cable as far as it gets. But as you can see, I only have a couple of feet left in the cage, so I really cannot go that much further anyway. Depending on how long your sewer line is, you may of course also end up in the main sewer, but in case that happens, it's not really a big deal. Next I'm going to start running some water. For one, this will help flush out the uh, debris that's right now left in the sewer line, but it will also help to clean the cable a little bit now that we're going to pull it back out. And in order to do that, we're going to set the motor again into the reverse position, and as we're running it, we're going to pull on the cable and we're also going to at the same time feed it back into the cage. For me personally this was the worst part of the entire job because it's really strenuous to pull the 100 foot long cable out of the sewer. Once you're getting towards the end of the cable you want to make sure not to run the motor at that point uh, because if the motor is still running when you pull the uh, tip of the cable out of the sewer line, uh, yeah, then it's just going to rotate and it's going to spin all kinds of sewage, sewer water uh, around in your basement. So make sure to just stop the motor and just pull it out, pull out the cable manually and push it into the cage. Even though we managed to drain the water, we only created a really small hole with the starter drill. So next we're going to replace this with a different cutter and then we're going to start the process all over. So let me now show you how to replace the tool on the tip of the cable. When we take a look at one of the other tools, then we're going to see here three pins, two on the uh, bottom end, those are static, and then there's a third one right here, and this one you can uh, depress. So this one is uh, spring-loaded, so you can push on it in order for it to give way. So this is what we're going to have to do with the one, uh, with the tool that's currently installed. As you see here the uh, two pins on the bottom part and then the one that's a little bit further up. So I'm going to push down on the one pin that's further up. I'm going to push down on it and then we can rotate uh, the tool that's currently installed and then you can pull it out. And in order to uh, install the new tool we have to do the same thing in reverse. So we first push in the two static pins and then uh, press down on the one that's uh, spring loaded and then eventually you will be able to install the new tool by uh, pushing it all the way in and don't forget to rotate it so and also check that it doesn't come out anymore. So in my case I have now installed the root cutter because I know I do have problems with trees here and those roots always keep getting back into the sewer. And now there's pretty much no difference in what we did before so we again feed the cable into the sewer line we're running the motor in forward direction in order to cut through everything that's in our way. If the uh, cutter gets stuck, then stop it and reverse it a little bit to uh, get it free and then go forward again until you got through your obstacle. At this point, I'm also still keep on running the water because in this case we do break loose some uh, small obstacles or we're cutting through some roots and we can flush those out right away. If you are dealing with tree roots and you haven't cleaned out your sewer for a long time, then I do suggest to use the retrieval tool and try to pull out some of those roots. Otherwise you may just have more problems further down the line because you simply keep on pushing all those roots further down. And then they may just get stuck at the point where you can't reach them. Okay, so eventually I'm all done with the uh, root cutter as well. And thanks to the running water, at this point the uh, cable is also clean so we can pretty much return the machine back to the hardware store as it is. And of course don't forget to plug up that clean out again. First we don't want all the smells to come out through it all the time. And then also in case the uh, water level ever comes back, ever rises again, you want to make sure that the uh, plug is really holding tight and it doesn't just pop open by the smallest amount of pressure com coming from underneath. Okay, and that was it for this video. I hope you found the information helpful. And in case you have any more questions or comments, then please leave a message below.